Welcome, everyone, to the Two Off the Tee show. It is Fantasy Six Packs, Golf, DFS, and Gambling Show. I am your host, Keith Fleming. With me, as always, my favorite degenerate gambler, Alan, a.k.a. Actively Lazy. And with it being a big week, the Masters, we have a special guest, my man Ryan Mulvey, who is the general manager at Bay Point Golf Club and a contributor to ESPN Northwest Radio. Ryan, what's going on? Oh, man, it's the best week of the year. Happy to be with you guys. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Alan, how are you doing? I need the Royals to win. I'm not. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> Took a risk today. Baseball. Uh, so this week we're here to talk the Masters. Uh, honestly, my favorite golf week of the year. Ryan worked. In Augusta, how many years did you were you down there, Ryan? I was up there in eight years, just across the river at a place called Mount Vintage Plantation. But uh, dealt with Masters Week for a long time, double shotguns every day, all the <laughs> corporate stuff. Just uh, it's just a crazy time of year up there. I mean, everybody makes you know fifty percent of their gross revenue in one week, so it's a good week for all the golf courses in that area. Yeah, when I worked in St. Simons at Sea Palms and Sea Island, Georgia, Florida weekends, very similar. To this. It's just, yep. it's nuts. Price uh, gouge and lots of golf. Exactly. Uh, so we're going to get into that in just a second. I do want to remind everyone that you can become an all access member of Fantasy Six Pack by going to fantasy six pack.net backslash plans. You can get access to their great Discord, access to award winning rankings, tools, and more. Uh, join today by using the promo code F6P MLB for 15% off. Uh, been a lot of discussion for baseball, golf. Obviously, when football season gets along, uh, you can ask any of the experts any question. Me and Alan are both on there. I highly recommend you doing that. Uh, recapping last week's event, I don't really want to spend any time on it because I want to talk about the Masters. I do want to say Corey Connors picked up the win. Both me and Alan mentioned him last week on the show. We always like when that happens. Uh, one of the official plays, I had him five to one to top five. So wish I would have gave him an official play to win. But Alan did mention him as somebody that you should uh, have on your betting board. So this I week we'll do it a little right. bit. Go ahead. What did you say? I about? got him outright 22 to one. There you go. That's what yeah. I'm talking about. Uh, this week, normally we go right into previewing the venue. But I want to do it a little bit different this week with it being a major. First, we're going to go over some of the storylines I think that are going to get the most attention this week. And then I want to get into with Ryan because, uh, again, he's been down in Augusta for so long. We're going to discuss uh, just some of the best places to watch the Masters if you're on the grounds this week. If you are, screw you. I did not get tickets this year. Uh, but it is an amazing place to visit. Uh, absolutely unreal. Even if you're not a golf fan. Uh, it is something I tell people if you're just, I mean, it's a bucket list deal for casual fan, non-fan, whatever. It's just one of the most beautiful places in the world. But let's get into these storylines. And I think the biggest one is probably the LIV guys. We got 18 players returning to the PGA Tour. Uh, you know, it's almost like one of those one night only wrestling uh, <laughs> promotion deals where you got a wrestler coming in for one night. Uh, for one tournament, they either qualified by still remaining in the top 50 uh, in the world rankings. Obviously, if you win the Masters, um, you know, you, you get invited back every year. If you win a major, I believe you get five years uh, worth of uh, Masters invites. Anybody that's won a tournament in the last year, if they won a PGA Tour event for the LIV, uh, leading for the LIV. But let's start here, Ryan. Do you think it's a fair question? Because I've seen it at a lot of places to question – are these guys ready? Because, you know, the, it's a different, you know, structure in LIV. It's three rounds, a shotgun starts. Is that a fair question? Or do you think it's just going to be golf is golf? And if you, if you like one of these guys on this venue, you should have no fear of using them. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they've been playing the 54 hole tournaments. They've been doing the team competition, but we got to remember all these guys have been playing in 72 hole events. There's a reason why they got invited to live tours because what they've did I don't think the three rounds are, I mean, these guys hit balls. They live and breathe golf every day. So I'm not, I don't, I know they're trying to make it a storyline, but I don't think it's a storyline for it. I mean, these guys, they've all played Augusta before. Most of them, are, I, mean, I think you got what, five past champions. Mm -hmm. uh, the champions dinner is going on right now, if I'm not mistaken. So the group picture came out, no surprise. All the yep. live guys in the back group together. I thought yep. that was hilarious. It's like Red the Clinton high school. Yep. Yep. 
Uh, but, but yeah, I, I think they'll all be ready. And to be honest, I think they've got to prove a little bit of a point. Um, so I think they're going to have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder because of that. Completely agree. Alan, how big would it be for one of these guys to win for their tour? Uh, it would be big, but I mean, people are just not watching it. I, I think um, they just, if, if they do win or if one of the guys wins, they just need to embrace the villain role. I mean, if you want to, reach the american market um in sports being the villain pays uh a lot actually so um i think more people would tune in to watch you lose than to watch you win that's just how we are <laughs> in the american sports landscape but um i i've read some things like uh harold varner did an interview was talking about how he felt disrespected and i know a couple of the other guys feel the same way and like ryan mentioned there's a ton of past champions coming back to play uh you can't erase years and years and decades of muscle memory and 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 work in one year like that's the same like i look at golf as like baseball guys take swings all the time like all the time that's all they do it's all muscle memory so you're not gonna undo that by playing a certain way in a year like that's just ridiculous it's still golf at the end of the day and that's how i'm capping it i do believe though that there is something to be said come sunday uh if the tournament gets tight it's going to have been a while, uh, you know, for these guys to be in that kind of situation where say you sleep on a, you know, a lead going into Sunday and and you're not basically going off all at the same time, uh, like they do on the live tour. Uh, Tiger talks about it all the time that, you know, it's not so much his ability to hit, you know, the golf shots that he has to, to win a tournament. It's just that, you know, pressure and atmosphere of being in contention on Sunday. So I think that's the one fair point, but, you know, to y'all's point, I, I, I'm there's Cam Smith's one of the guys I love this week. Uh, there's some live guys on my card. So uh, I think overall you're correct. All right. Storyline number two, Scotty Scheffler going for back to back masters championships. Nobody has done it since tiger in Oh two. Only Tiger, Sir Nick Faldo, and Jack Nicholas have done this. So obviously, that is a huge accomplishment. Uh, Ryan, I, I I talked about this a little bit in my article on Fantasy Six Pack this week. I'm very interested to see how Scheffler responds to the WGC because we've seen these guys kind of grab a hold of the PGA Tour and dominate for spurts. And then all it can take is one bad result one, you know, mistake, which he missed a very makeable putt to eliminate Sam Burns in the match play. Then he got smoked, obviously lost that match two holes later. He got smoked by Rory uh, in the third place match. And I just wonder if there's a little bit of doubt because we know as golfers that doubt is a disease that, you know, when you're on top and everything's going well, you believe you can win this game so much easier. And all it takes is just a little bit of doubt. And all of a sudden it becomes much harder. You start putting added pressure on yourself. JT, I thought, spoke really eloquently about this on the Netflix documentary show that, you know, it was almost like he was wanting it too much uh, before his PGA victory last year. Uh, should Scheffler be the heavy favorite for you? And uh, what do you think his chances are this week? I mean, obviously, I think his chances are good. Like you had mentioned, not very many people have repeated at Augusta because it's so hard to win at Augusta. I mean, you saw it with Jordan Spieth when he was going back to back and he dunked two in the water on 12 and pretty much took away all his chances. Scotty Scheffler seems to always bounce back. He's gone on several little runs. Um, his game is just – he doesn't seem to get too high or too low, and I think that is why he won at Augusta last year, and you have to have that kind of mentality at Augusta. Because Augusta from tee to green is not that difficult, but those green you hit, you miss the six green short, you know, long right, and the pins in the back, or any what? of those other things. You, you could make one bag swing, and it can be an absolute disaster. Um, but I like his chances to repeat. You've seen, I know he didn't didn't have a great showing at the WGC, and match plays a little bit of a different animal because you can go ahead and lose the whole tournament in one match. But he just seems to put together a couple good rounds. Obviously, getting off to a good start at Augusta, not playing yourself out of it in the first couple rounds. Uh, but I like his chances to repeat, and I, I think he's a fair, you know, top five favorite to win the tournament for sure. Alan, you've, you've said so much to me in conversations recently about Scheffler. And the one thing that I, I you know, it's like what I'm telling people, I, I definitely think that he should be a favorite this week. 
Uh, and it would not surprise me if it doesn't mean anything, but we have seen guys, you know, Spieth, Rory, Kepka, you know, they go on these runs and then it's like just something happens. And again, I really do believe it's doubt that creeps into your head. And then that's, you know, why they become uh, still one of the best players on tour, but they don't have that, you know, tiger, like just, I'm going to finish this tournament if I'm in contention or have a lead on Sunday. But don't you think it's Scheffler's putter is the main reason uh, this week that he should be a favorite because he's arguably the most clutch putter on tour right now. Yeah. I mean, he just knows how to put the ball in the hole, man. Like that's been his MO since he came on the scene. Like even back when, um, when he was a rookie and we didn't really know who, well, I didn't really know who he was and his eyes was really long. Like you could see that part of his game was natural. Like he's a natural green reader, uh, and again, the poise, even if he's frazzled, like Ryan said, he bounces back. I think I said that last week, too. Like, he always has this thing about him where I personally think uh, he's got more mental fortitude than the JTs, than the Rory's, than the uh, uh, Spiefs. That, that's what makes me more optimistic of him. Like, if he's grouped with Tiger or any of the other top golfers, like, he's literally the same demeanor. He's almost like Kawhi Leonard. Like, you don't really see him show right. much emotion ever. And then, like, you know, when he wins, he lets it all out. But, like, very rare on the golf course. Uh, Cantley's another guy. You don't see them get too, too animated uh, when they miss. And if it, and if they do, it's just for a brief moment. You can tell that they put it to the back of their head and they're, they're on to the next. So um, I'm pretty sure at the uh, Champions Dinner, uh, some of the guys will probably say something along the lines or be talking and he'll hear what we all know. Once you get that one out the way, it, it does ease you a little bit. It doesn't necessarily get easier, but you get more comfortable the more you play and the better you do at Augusta. And obviously winning at Augusta always makes you confident that you can do it again. And I think Bubba said that in his interview as well. Like once you win once, like you're pretty confident, even if you go uh, T57 or miss the cut the next year, the year after that, you've done it before. And I think Scotty, somebody's going to tell him that. If not, his caddy needs to tell him, but I also don't need him to win. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it, it's what makes the Masters to me so special is it's the only major to the same venue every year. And we'll get into this when we get into our picks and the course layout. But, uh, you know, history, uh, especially with a player's results, the same guys do very well, uh, you know, there over and over again. You know, hello, Freddie Couples, Bernhard Langer, these guys that are in their, you know, late 50s and 60s and they can either make the cut or push it each year. All right, storyline number three, the Rory Slam. Uh, Rory has a chance to be the sixth golfer in the history of golf to win all four majors. I'll go ahead and tell you right now, he is my pick uh, to win this week. I feel like it's his time. Uh, his tee to green numbers are out of this world. I like the fact that he swapped to a blade putter uh, at the WGC. I've always felt like he putted better uh, with the blade putter. Uh, he obviously putted well there where he finished, you know, third. He also kind of blew his uh, semifinal match, came back, beat Scheffler easily. Um, I just think it would be fitting in a lot of ways, uh, especially with this being the first tournament with LIV and PGA players a year after the separation. If Rory ends up winning, uh, he's finished in the top 10, seven of his last nine starts there. His ball striking numbers are just outrageous, even for him. Uh, I think he's gaining almost eight shots on the field, tee to green in 2023. And the thing that, Ryan, people don't talk about enough is Rory is now a great putter. I, I don't know why the narrative is that he's not, but uh, what do you think of Rory's chances this week? I mean, obviously, I think he, he's the, the odds-on favorite to win the tournament. He's obviously playing fantastic golf this year going into it. And, yeah, I, that, that's a good thing you say about Rory's putting. It It's not that he's a was a bad putter. It's just he could have won so many more majors if he just putted a little bit better in a lot of those big time tournaments. Um, you know, I'd like to see him win the Masters. I, I think there's just something about Augusta and Rory that he plays well, but he doesn't ever play well early in the tournament. Like in the last couple of years, he's always finished very high, but it's because he shot some real low round in the final round on Sunday where he wasn't really in contention. 
If he can get off to a hot start because you know the weather's coming in on Saturday, it's not going to be good conditions. I mean, Augusta has their magic ways of drying right. everything up. And I was up there one time when a tornado came through late Tuesday night. Our golf course is a disaster. Augusta <laughs> National's perfect that next morning. Um, I think if Rory can get off to a good start, um, you know, maybe make the cut, at, you know, five or six under instead of he just doesn't seem to get out of the gate real well at Augusta, always makes the cut, but really plays well on Sunday when he's not necessarily in contention. So hopefully he can he can get himself into contention going in the weekend, have a good Saturday round. And if he can be within, you know, in the lead or or two or three back going into Sunday, I think that's where, you know, look out if he's in that position and put all the money on him on Sunday. Alan, do you think that if he is in contention on Sunday, no matter who uh, he's going up against the Augusta crowd is going to be behind him. Cause we saw last year sort of that trend where, you know, outside of tiger, obviously uh, the crowd was really behind Roy, which is significant. They normally do not get behind international players. Uh, there's been some exceptions usually depending on who they're going toe to toe with on Sunday. But uh, do you think Roy is going to be the crowd favorite this week? Yeah, I think um, he's done a good job of making himself like, the face of the PGA uh, resistance against Liv. And um, I think that's going to boost him a lot uh, coming around um, the back end on Sunday or whatever the final round is. I I think that I said, I jokingly said since he had the kid, but <laughs> I think there's something to his game where it's just a little off. Um, I, I think it's more of the pressure he puts on himself. I don't, like having watched him uh, for the last couple of years, and you know, I I slander Rory every chance I get because he's so talented, and it doesn't make any sense His whatsoever. Swing is so good, yeah. like, dude, you can shoot sixty four on Sunday. Where was that Friday, Saturday, or where was that Thursday? So I I I get frustrated as a gambler uh, because he's so talented. He should be the seven to one, like all the time, and. Um, I think it's a lot of the pressure he puts on himself. So me personally, if he's within two to three, I think there's trouble there. If he's within two to three, there's not a lot of pressure on him. The pressure's on the guy in front of him. I think he runs him down. And I think he plays better that way. Horse terminology, he's a closer. Like he's not going to come out the gate and, and be out front. But if he can get a clean run and somebody else is in the front and they tire themselves out, Rory will run them down. I think he plays more comfortable that way. And um, like I always say, you will be able to tell first round what kind of Rory you're going to get. <laughs> I'm telling you. All right. The last storyline. And, Alan, are you proud of me? We're 17 minutes and 40 seconds into this, and I have not you brought up Tiger, Tiger like Woods. six times, man. Oh, did I already mention him? Yeah. Well, let's yeah. talk about Tiger. Uh, <laughs> obviously, he is back, uh, you know, in a much better place, I think, physically than he was this time last year. What's most interesting to me was the comments that he made today in the presser saying that this could be it. I've, I've never heard Tiger say that. He doesn't know when uh, he's going to make his final Masters start. Um, so Fred dramatic. Couple said that he played very well in the practice rounds. My biggest concern, obviously, and it's why I have him as a top 20 prop bet, but that's basically it, is just – is he going to wear down, uh, you know, like he did last year where he played well for two rounds and then shot 78, 78 over the weekend. What are your expectations this weekend, Ron? I mean, you know, I love Tiger. I just, you know, he's always got to say something to make it real dramatic. Like he always yeah. does. He's just loves to loves to say, Oh yes, this could be my last masters. Let's tell everybody that. So the entire, they tell him to say that. So the entire world gets excited. But as you guys know, Augusta National is just such a grind for a walk. And mm -hmm. that's why I think that was showed its teeth last year. I mean, he, he made the cut, which I'm on the fence if he's going to make the cut this year, just because I think the cut's going to be a, a pretty solid score. Um, but I mean, if, obviously it's fantastic for golf. One that he's there. If he makes the cut, it's going to be awesome. I just, I think he's not healthy enough for the demands of Augusta national to put four good rounds together. Would I love to see it? Absolutely. Do I think it's going to happen? Probably not. CBS is probably the only people that want uh, to see it more uh, no, than yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, all right. I, I do want to discuss because you. I don't get to it. say anything about Tiger. I know what you're going to say, but go ahead, Alan. <laughs> no, I'm good. Take your I shots. Have to, I don't have to say anything. It's just 
hopefully, hopefully this time next year we will truly have him as like an analyst or something, and and not this. Oh, it's my last again. Don't Literally, put that out in the universe, dude. No, he's all gonna, the, all the things, that can. literally, you know all the is. things the tiger has survived. I'm not hearing. I'm not listening to you anymore, man. You literally are ro- you're on one put way. together. Yeah, you're like RoboCop at this point. So I'm not listening to you. All right. So, Ryan, because this is very interesting. I've been to, you know, been fortunate enough to be to a, uh, go to a lot of Masters. If anybody's listening and they're going for the first time, you, you want to discuss some of the best places to actually watch the Masters because there is some locations where you can actually, like, you know, say – I know one of my favorites is to sit on 16 where you get to watch the par three and then the guys tee off on 17 and the, you know, the approach shots and the green on 15. What are some of your favorite places? Yeah, that was going to be one of mine. The grandstands to the right of 15 green. If you're far enough over in those grandstands, you can obviously see everybody hitting 15, which is such a dramatic spot where so many masters were won or lost. You're obviously seeing them hit on to 16. And then if you can kind of see behind you, you can turn on 17, but I also love uh, 14 tee box. That's one of my favorite spots on the golf course. I was lucky enough to be there when Phil hit that shot out of the pine straw. Oh, wow. uh, it was actually my mom's birthday, which was even better. Um, so that's just a great spot because you're seeing all the action on 13, and then you're seeing him come back and tee off on 14. Um, another awesome spot there is, you know, two green, three tee as you're walking in. But if you're going for the first time, I mean, if you're, if you're a tournament round, I, I suggest kind of locating a couple cool spots and moving from spot to spot because trying to follow people at Augusta That's National awful. is impossible. Yep. There's just so many people and the golf course is so condensed. Uh, but there's definitely some cool spots. And there's a really cool spot where there's some concessions and some bathrooms right there behind two tee box that a lot of people kind of forget about. Um, it's kind of just to the right of the par of type tee box. It's, it's never real busy over there. Um, but yeah, my favorite spot is to, uh, to hang out there on 14 T box. And there's just the back nine at Augusta, especially on Saturday and Sunday is where all the drama happens. So if you can insert yourself in one of those spots and you see some, you can see some of the all time best shots in the history of the masters by being there. So those are, that's kind of, kind of the spots that come to mind. So in 2000, I think it was 11 or 12, we were sitting on 16. Uh, it was Thursday, Fred couples gets his swing to the top on the 16th and my buddy Ricky drops his beer <laughs> makes a really loud noise Freddie backs up off the ball gives a you know eat shit and die look and I'm yeah. just you know calling Ricky out like, <laughs> You're like, it's, it wasn't me. It's, it's this guy right here and the best part of it was Freddie got back over the ball and hit it like six feet yeah uh, I mean, uh, <sighs> yeah. but I was like man to piss off Fred Couples Ricky you really gotta be something that's like that so takes cool. a lot that exactly. takes a lot uh, any other cool stories uh, from Augusta? I know that one that I just kind of want to hear about is you proposed to your wife there, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, back in uh, 2012, uh, obviously we talked about I worked in that market for a long time. So I was I knew a lot of the hospitality houses, guys, like the guy that owns the Legends Club. He was a member of our club. So if I always needed like a ticket, I could get one. But it was more like, hey, 30 minutes. I got a ticket. Meet me here. Uh, but I was able to line that ticket up uh, prior. So she had no idea. We went over to the hospitality thing. We had a couple beverages. Then we went into Augusta, had some more beverages, walked. My wife, loved, she's not a big golf fan, but she loves people watching. And Augusta National is one it's of the best place. places in the world yep. for people watching. And uh, we had some drinks, a couple egg salad sandwiches, and made our way over there to Amen Corner and dropped down on one knee. And she said yes. And what was really cool is there was a bunch of people that saw me do it. So they took a bunch of, I didn't, I didn't even think about pictures. <laughs> so uh, a bunch of people took some pictures and afterwards they came up, I gave them my business card and they emailed them to us. So I'm forever ingrained her into Augusta Nash. Both my kids were born in Augusta. So oh, awesome. it's just a big piece of our, uh, our family and uh, our lives. So that was a really cool experience. And like I said, right now everybody's proposing on Amen Corner. So I did it back before it was cool. Started a trend. That's and right. So your favorite moment that you witnessed at Augusta, would it be Phil Shout on 14? Yeah, I was there when he won his first Masters too. So that was pretty cool. But that shot he hit on 13, I mean, everybody can see him. They're looking like, where is he at? Is he in the trees? All of a sudden you see the pine straw splash and you're waiting for the ball. And then it lands on the green. Everybody just goes nuts. And of course he missed the putt. That's all I say. It's the most Phil thing ever though. He still went on to win. But yeah, yeah. so that was probably my favorite Masters moment too, for sure. I've been to a bunch of practice rounds as well. 
Love watching guys skip on 16. Mm -hmm. That's always a good time. It's just everything about that place is so special. I really love going with people when it's their first time because mm -hmm. it's like you get to relive it through yeah. them for the first time again. So it's just such a special place. I haven't been since 2015 since we came down here to Florida, but I'm hoping to get back up there soon. Amazing. All right, let's talk a little bit about the course. Uh, it doesn't really need much of an introduction, obviously. Uh, one of the longest courses now on tour, it's over 7,500 yards. They lengthened the par 5 13th by about 30 yards. Uh, Rory McIlroy, uh, I heard Santa Presser that he was hitting eight iron in uh, before this change. Now it's more like a five iron. Mickelson was talking about that um, it just, the tee shot is actually much easier now, but it's the second shot, obviously, that gets much tougher, which I'm okay with. I don't personally like uh, guys being able to hit like seven, eight irons uh, into par fives. Uh, I think that there should be a little bit more of a risk reward factor to it. I like the, the fact that they did this and this is on the heels of them lengthening a couple of other holes. I think they lengthened the 15th uh, last year and the 11th, right? And that the two yeah. holes. Uh, 11, so, maybe a couple of years ago on 11, they dropped that already brutal T shot. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Back. And, and that's another thing I always tell people ridiculous. is walk the 11th just to see the T shot. That Let's go watch you get T shots on 11. You, you get humbled real quick. It's, it's insane. Uh, Course comps, there's not really any. Uh, I tried to people there. I mean, I've seen people list some. I listed some in my article, but in reality, there is no other uh, like Augusta National. Uh, the strengths that you need around here, par five scoring is huge. Uh, you have nine par fours that are 440 yards or more. So the par fours are very difficult. A couple of the par threes are extra. Actually, I mean, really, in all honesty, all the par threes are really difficult. Yep. Even the short ones, the uh, green like twelve, like those are ridiculous. Yeah, uh, you, you normally need to putt well here. Obviously, ball striking is a key. Ryan, do you think it's going to play a factor? I heard Phil say something, and I had not thought about this. That with the rain, you're going to be able to chip a little bit more around the greens, to where normally guys are going to have to putt if you're just off the green. And Phil said, with it being uh, wetter and softer you actually bring the wedges out and chip a little bit more because it's you know not so tight and firm to where you kind of have that grain growing into you yeah you might see it a little bit like when dj won it back in the first the only one that was ever played in the fall because obviously it's a completely different golf course and i mean it's overseeded rye it's bermuda grass all in the summer when it's closed overseeded with rye um, but yeah, and, and you know, they have sub air everywhere, so they can really dry it as up as much as they want to. Um, but yeah, I, I think the wedges will, will definitely play a little more around the greens. Uh, when you're watching, if anybody's watching this weekend, make sure you're paying attention where these guys are trying to hit the ball. <laughs> You'll see a lot of flags that nobody will hit anywhere near. They are hitting it to specific locations on the green because the greens are the teeth of this golf course. And if you hit it in the wrong spot, you can't two putt period. So they know exactly where they're trying to hit it on the greens. And it may, you may watch guys hit it 30 yards right of the flag. And that's a fantastic shot because they know which holes they can be aggressive with depending on the hole locations. But yeah, I mean, and you've got so many undulated shots. Five is just so sloped from right to left. 13, which you were talking about earlier, they lengthened that hole, which even guys on the previous tee, a lot of guys would hit three wood because they were so worried about hitting it too far up through the fairway. And then you don't even have a shot in the green really because of the rough. So it'll be interesting to see how that hole plays. I don't think it'll change the scoring too much because you're still going to be going for the green in two just with a little bit longer club. But I think you'll see him playing a little safer because that green slopes so much from the back to the front. Um, but yeah, it's it, the if it's a little softer, they'll they'll have the sub air roaring though and dry that thing up as much as they can. So the key stats that I listed in the article for this week: strokes gained, tee to green, uh, recent form, obviously. Uh, again, par five scoring. If if you look at the guys that have won the last decade and then what they've done on the par fives, mm -hmm. uh, you have to you have to make hay on those. Uh, I think it's Tiger at this course is like 80 something under on the par fives Ridiculous. and then around like even on the par fours and par threes. So it kind of shows again, uh, just where he's found his success. I heard Jack's numbers were very similar. Course history is huge here. Uh, more than any other event. I, I really believe that just again, 
you know, to what Ryan was just talking about, if you know where to miss, if you know where to hit the ball, if you know how to play Augusta, uh, it just gives you a huge advantage, uh, even if you're not playing as well as somebody who, say, does not have that experience. Strokes gained around the green. Uh, strokes gained approach is a huge one, obviously. The irons are such a big, you know, part. And then three-putt avoidance for me on firm and fast greens is something that I would really pay attention to. Alan, is there anything you would want to add for the key stats? Uh, yeah, I just want to give a disclaimer. I know I've been looking like really stupid with my mouth open, but I got allergies, <laughs> so I can't really breathe through my nose. I thought you were looking at the roll score. No, man, I just, I just think I just didn't want people to look at the video and be like, "Yo, why is this dude looking so dumb?" And I gotta wipe my nose. Sorry. Anyway, um, key stats. Um, like I said, I'm still putting a premium on approach shots. Um, and like Ryan hinted to, like you just gotta know where to put the ball. Um, and then honestly, I just. I like that it's so difficult to kind of cap the Masters because you you want everybody to win. Everybody's got a chance in your mind. Uh, But it also makes you kind of hone in a little bit more because you can't pick all the golfers. You got to you got to like corral it in a little. And so for me, I I looked um, I did a deep dive in the variance of slow greens and and bent grass because I think the rain is going to play a factor into it. And I found that a lot of the guys that I liked with that correlated with people who could also play on typical conditions there. So I just went ahead and and picked people based on um, their ability to maneuver around um, windy conditions, slower greens, and just essentially they have a stat for guys who can play tough courses. And so I leaned on that as well because the Masters is a tough course. It's going to challenge you mentally and you want fighters. And I think I said that when we did the Bay Hill breakdown, like you want fighters at some of these course, uh, courses, the players. You want fighters at the players because you're going to be playing against the course more than you are the guy that's teeing off behind you and that you have to keep that in mind. Just one thing, though, Alan, the yeah. greens might be a little bit slower than normal. But they'll still be some of the yeah, best. Yeah, I guys also playing. heard Ryan say that it, these <laughs> greens are blessed. A yeah. corner is not a joke. <laughs> They literally so, have a system underneath that just sucks the water they can out of it. They can cool it. It's they can dry it. They can change the pH. They can do whatever the hell they want to do. They got money. Well, yeah. I, I stand by the fact that I did look at both scenarios for all the guys that I picked, and they're still solid golfers no matter the conditions. So that's why I just went on ahead and selected the way I did. What's your key stat this week, Ron? What are you looking at when you, when you're trying to find a guy? Um, you know, I would say like you hinted on, I think par five scoring, if you probably went back and looked at the last 20 winners, I would guarantee probably 75% of those led the field in par five scoring. Um, just because those are the holes Two, you got a birdie eight, you got a birdie, you know, 13, a lot of Eagles happen on that. And then you got a, a tough par four and then another par five where, you know, you're hitting irons in. You've got, I mean, Zach Johnson was a perfect example. I mean, he played that golf course. He didn't attack the par fives, but he made birdies on the par fives because he played him as three shot holes. So he was hitting wedges into all of them. I think par five scoring, like you said, you hinted it with Tiger and Jack. That's that's the bread and butter and obviously not making, you know, mistakes and your approach shots and all that. But I think whoever leads the field in par five scoring is probably going to be near the top come Sunday afternoon. All right, before we get into the gambling picks, I want to real quickly go over the DFS plays from my article this week. Again, go to fantasysixpack.net, and you will see my article, as well as my man, Alan, uh, actually did a betting preview uh, for the Masters, so be sure to check both of those out. Uh, Not going to go into details, but just again, my official lineup was Rory McIlroy, 10,600, Cam Smith, 9,800, Sung J.M., 8,100, Corey Connors, 7,600. I know this was Shock Island, but Tiger Woods, 7,300. <laughs> I will say that is because he's made the cut. And cut maker. Single one. And again, on DK, you need those. They and then uh, either Kevin <laughs> Knott, 6,500, or one of the four extra picks I gave, Danny Will, 6,600. With the weather looking like it is, I probably will swap Knott uh, to Willett just because it's going to play a little bit longer. He hits the ball a little further. Uh, the other guys that I had in there that um, – we're Colin Moore, Cowie, 9,100, Hideki Matsuyama, 8,400, and Min Woo Lee at 7,600. Do either of you guys have anybody for DFS that you're really looking at this week? I think Tony Finau has got to be on a lot of people's radar. He's played Augusta well. He's got a very compact swing. He doesn't make a lot of big misses, and he's a good putter. 
I like Tony Fee now in there. I'm not sure what he costs on some of those things in two. And then I think he's 9,300 this week, I believe, which gotcha. is not too bad for a guy. No, that not, not for him. He does, yeah, for sure. And then uh, Max Homa, obviously, is having an unbelievable year. And I think if we're going to have a first time winner, I think it's going to be a guy like Homa or something like that. That just he's playing on fire this year. He's got nothing to lose. Um, so I think those two guys would be two good good ones to throw in there too. Are the live golfers priced appropriately? Because they're uh, actually, to be honest, I think they're cheap. Yeah, uh, they're, yeah. Because I was gonna say, sportsbook wise, a lot of them are um, they're really like not priced right. So I was just curious about that because uh, I mean, like I would, Bryson DeChambeau, who say what you want to about Bryson, he's made the cut five out of six times. You know, he can make birdies and eagles if the course plays long and wet. Mm-hmm. He's seventy three hundred. I think Kepka's. Uh, like 7,600. I mean, yeah, they, that's what I was they, gonna ask about like Brooks, mm-hmm. but yeah, um, they, yeah. I think they're underpriced. Patrick Reed's another guy that I would probably 7,300 again. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, he went to Augusta State and he knows that golf course real well, it's for sure. I mean, he's not a big fan. I actually have some personal experience with Patrick Reed being a jackass like he's been his oh, whole career. I'm sure. Sure, yeah. Uh, yeah, they used to. <laughs> Real quick, Augusta State used to come out to Mount Vintage and play their qualifying tournaments for whatever tournament they were going to play because we had a really challenging, difficult golf course. Every person would come through, say thank you, say hello. There was one guy that would just walk to the range and never say anything to the staff, and that was Patrick Reed. Oh, man. That was like when I met John Rocker in uh, St. Simons at Seapalm. Same deal. He was a huge asshole. Yeah. And it's just like, man, the reputation precedes you. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. But – Augusta National, you can't count them oh, out. Oh, no, and the dude can roll it as well. And that's the other thing that I didn't mention is elite putters also do very well at Augusta. Uh, and that's something, again, while like Kevin Na is a guy that, uh, you know, I mentioned, Patrick Reed, Cam Smith again, who I love. Uh, these guys that can really putt do very well uh, at Augusta. Let's get into the fun part. Let's do the bets and props. All right, who is everybody's favorite? Let's start there. Who who is your official like pick to win? I'd have to. I'm gonna say uh, Scotty Scheffler. Ooh, I like it for the reason we talk about with Rory before. I just I think there's something about Augusta that ever since he hooked that one on ten when he had that lead and uh, and and Scheffler's obviously won there. He's playing great golf. I think if I had to pick a favorite, I would say Scotty Scheffler. Nobody said a ball there since or before then. I really could not believe where Rory had that tee so shot. So far left, it was unbelievable. And once you like go there, yeah. uh, you kind of realize like how far left it was. Unbelievable. I mean, I was, yeah. Alan, who is your uh, favorite to win? I mean, <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm saying this, but Patrick Canley. Um, I think that uh, he's a little under the radar. Uh, he's a very versatile golfer. What is he at 16 to 1? Is that right? He's 20 to 1. 20 to 1. Yeah, but I just think that um, he's he's played solid here, mm-hmm. and it's just a matter of time before it clicks, and um, I'm, I'm looking for him to peak at the right time. Yeah, if his putter gets hot, too, look out. Uh, I mentioned Rory is mine, plus 750. I'm not crazy, though, uh, about betting Scheffler, Rom, or Rory. Uh, but just because the odds are insane. I mean, all yeah. of them, I believe. I think Scheffler is down to plus 650 on DK. Yeah. Rory went up to plus 750. I think Rom's like 8-1. to one. But Rory gains almost a full shot on Bent Greens. It's by far his best surface. Uh, he made, again, that change, the blade putter at the WGC. I like what I saw there. Seven of the last nine trips to Augusta, top 10. And he's gaining 7.4 strokes T to green over his last five starts on tour. It's kind of, you know, what we were talking about earlier. If he can just have a good putting week, uh, he's going to be tough to beat. But even more importantly, to Ryan's point, he needs to get off to a good start for sure. Uh, Do you guys like Cam Smith this week? Because this is the next guy I have on my betting board. I've actually got uh, Cam Smith, who I've put most of my stuff on straight up just because – I think there's so many like he's he's been on the live. He was just dominating the PGA tour and then he goes to the live. So he's kind of behind the radar. I mean, and I see him here on what I use. Uh, I think he's plus twenty two hundred. Yeah, that's like, what he was on DK. Twenty two to one. Plus twenty two hundred. Cam Smith. Come on. He won his last major. Uh, he yeah. won the Australian major. Uh, that was back in November after he gone yeah. to the live tour. Uh, and most importantly, 
top 10 in four or five starts, three top five. So he obviously loves this venue. What I like about it is his biggest weakness is off the tee. And this yeah. is a course that you can spray it and it's okay because it doesn't have penal rough. And that is honestly like his kryptonite. If you look at, uh, and again, his record in majors is really insane how good it is, but it's always the driver that gets him in trouble uh, no surprise that he won an open, which again, you know, you can kind of spray it at an open a little bit more uh, than say at a U.S. Open. I love Cam Smith at twenty-two to one. Uh, what do you think about Cam, Alan? Do you like him this week? I like him more on DK where he's thirty-five to one. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> Is he like up to thirty-five to one. Yeah, he's thirty-five to one. I, that's what I've been doing. When I was looking at my notes and I was looking at that's DK. The house. Yeah, I was looking at my notes, looking at DK, looking at my notes. So I'm like, they're saying 22, and I wrote down 22, but I see 35. I'm, I don't oh, even, I didn't yeah, have he him was as, 22 to one. Yeah, two days I didn't ago, have him as an official. I didn't have him as an official shit. pick, but I I'm mean, telling I you, this, to, the live guys are just not getting any love. Man, yeah, I love so that I, 35 I to have one. to take Holy him at 35 cow. to one, but that's not my second pick, though. Um, my second who is pick, yours? <laughs> Jason Day, man, I think he's getting overlooked again. He's peaking at uh, the right time. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and he's been he's steady. And I think he's got the shot creativity that it'll take uh, from time to time. And the one thing I've noticed in his game that's been very, very steady is his ability to save from the sand and just mm-hmm. in general avoid three putts, which is something that we talked about. And his putter has been very steady this year. Uh, so I am very optimistic on him at 22 to one, which is funny because for what the last three years I've told you, get over Jason Day. He's terrible. And I don't know. He fixed his back. So I'm cool. I'm back. Yeah, he just had to get healthy. <laughs> that's all. Yeah. And just a reminder that Day, his recent history is not unreal at Augusta, but when he was playing really well, he had a great stretch from like 2011 to 2017 at this event. Uh, I think did he birdie the last four holes or three holes that year, Ryan, that he lost by one? I want to say he birdied the last four because he went 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah. So he was so close. He uh he has he's one all the game, he knows what it uh, does to get it done. To do that. Do you have anybody else in that 20 to 1 range, Ryan? Um, you know, we talked about Tony Fee now earlier. Um, you know who's nobody is this is a little bit on here, he's 33 to 1, but Will Zalatoris. Nobody is talking uh-huh. about that guy anymore. That's Alan's boy. Who, who's talking about him? Who's talking about him, Keith? That's Alan. <laughs> hey, you're Big talking Z. about him. That. Perfect. Perfect. Big Z. <laughs> yes. The the Tin Man. He's ready to rock and roll. But yeah, I mean, he's going to win a major and he's played well at Augusta. The uh, What has he played two or three times at Augusta? I think mm-hmm. not a whole yep. lot of times, but he's got around the golf course pretty T6, good. T2. He's got yeah. two top six uh, finishes. Yeah. The only thing that scares me is his game right now is just very unwill Zalatoris. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even his ball striking has not been, but again, he's the kind of guy that it could click and uh, you know, maybe he's got a little Kepka in him that if you look at it last year, he didn't really truly take off until the major started in the big event. So when well, you see got- a lot of guys that they s- slump a little bit and all of a sudden they go into Augusta and they win it and just everything takes yep. something about Augusta just brings out it's early in the season brings out the best in people. So, oh man, the Augusta is so tough to pick because anybody could, I mean, you guys like Danny Willett guys like that have won in the past. Like, yeah. I, can win I told team. you it, it makes you, it makes you have to like really take a step back and look at your sheet. that has got 35 names and say that I can't bet 35 people. <laughs> yep, they could all win. Yeah. So I, I've got Rory and Cam. The guy that I'm shocked is not getting any love is Colin Morikawi at 25 to one. He's improved each year at Augusta, finished fifth last year. Uh, he's ninth in the field, T to green, and second in approach to statistics that are huge at this venue. And a reminder that this guy is also an unbelievable major player. He has five top five finishes in majors in his last 11 uh, major events. I think, you know, I think he's right. Or didn't we say 25 to one or better? This was, was this two years ago now, Alan, that when more is 25 to one or more to major, we're taking him because he should be. Well, yeah, it, was, it was supposed to be an automatic bet every time. <laughs> so I'm on more Cowie. Sun J M another guy. I'm on 35 to one. Do either one of you guys like Sun J this week? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, why am I, 
Why are my odds so different from y'all? I guess y'all just got in early. It's 45 to 1 for me. It sure yeah, is. Like, I want to be on whatever yeah. you're on. No, it's literally. Hey, man, I'm on DraftKings. But I, I, I can't do that. So Ryan, so, so, Ryan, I don't typically place bets until like Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, mostly yeah. because I'll be betting everything else, but also because. I want to look at the interviews first, see how people talking and everything, get some news information. Maybe there's some tidbits here and there. Somebody might be having a back injury or, or wrist yeah. injury or something. And then I, I place my bets. But yeah, I like Sung Jay. Um, but before I got to Sung Jay, you know, I got to, I, I can't not bet Brooks. I yeah. mean, that's my guy. So I got Brooks at 40 to one. Mm-hmm. I think, I think everybody should take flyers on live guys who are competitive because they, they, it's true. They have been very disrespected by the odds, uh, by the media, by their, um, by their fellow competitors. I mean, it's just kind of embarrassing. Because again, Cameron he won Smith, on the lift tour too. You know that, right, Alan? Yeah, like last week. He won last so. week. Yeah, I went to bet them, but they don't give out any course information or any stats, so I wasn't <laughs> doing it. But um, I know how he plays at Augusta, so I'm, I'm two on the top tens train. and four starts again. Just we're talking about Mark Cowley. Kupka, seven top 10 finishes in his last 11 major starts. Uh, I like that a lot. The next guy that, again, Sungjae real quickly, no worse than 17th in the field in strokes game putting. Total, tee to green, off the tee, and ball striking. Has two top eight finishes in the Masters. What I really like about this was he finished second in his first one, but if you remember, that was the COVID one. Yeah, The course played yeah. completely different. Then he missed the cut the second year, which – Concern me a little bit because maybe it just set up better for him. Well, he came back last year, finished eighth. So I think any concerns of just, you know, he got lucky that first year because it was playing different. And, you know, to Ryan's point, maybe it plays a little bit more like that with the weather and the rain coming in. Uh, so I like Sanjay a lot. But uh, Hideki's the next guy I got on my board, 40 to 1. Six finishes, the 15th or better in this event since 2015. Obviously, he won it in 2021. That Masters, if you remember, played wet over the weekend. Uh, it actually rained, I believe, during both Saturday and Sunday's round. Still one of the best ball strikers on tour, and he's in good form. Three top 15 finishes in the last six starts. Two of those were elevated events. Do either of you guys like Hideki? I think you can't count any former Masters winner out at all, especially with he was the first ever from Japan to win the Masters. Mm-hmm. Is that yep. correct? I mean, yeah. he's just uh, – his ball striking is what you have to have at Augusta. Um, and if his putter gets hot, you know, he's just as good as anybody out there. All right. Anybody, you got Hideki, anybody else in that 40 I'm to 50 pick range? Him because Hideki. <laughs> Who's that, Hideki? Uh, yeah, I was going to say I'm not going to take him now since you took him. Well, uh, but no, Hideki, all the things he said were solid. Um, the 50 range or right at 50, I, I'm going to take a flyer on Justin Rose. Um, just because I think he's a solid golfer and I feel like he's, he's, it's coming around. And when you talk about streaky putters, he's, he's got one of those as well. So I'm just hoping to kind of catch lightning, lightning in the bottle. And at 50 to one, it's worth a shot with him. Brian, you got any other guys in that 40 to 50 range? Um, you know, I, we talked about Patrick Reed. I see him 56 to one on here. Um, <laughs> Tommy Fleetwood, you know, he's he was playing really well in majors, and you, you really hadn't a whole, heard a whole lot about him recently. And that's what I was saying earlier. Some of these guys that, you know, you're just not hearing a whole ton going into Augusta, and all of a sudden they just come out of nowhere. But, you know, Tommy Fleetwood's got the game for Augusta. So, I mean, I would, I would you know, at, at 50 to 1, not a bad one to throw some throw some bucks on. All right, what hey, about – oh, go ahead, Real Adam. quick, real quick, Keith, Ryan, yeah. Patrick Reed is now 90 to 1. Come on. I like that. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I laugh when you said the eyes. It's, Jesus. I don't know if DraftKings is just different or what. No, it's yeah. changed. I'm telling Alan, I was looking at it this morning. And remember, because I told you, Rory, all of those guys were at plus uh, seven to one yeah. this morning. And they've changed where Rory's plus 750. Shepard's actually gone down. I'm just shocked how much they've, you know, shifted. Uh, Minwoo Lee, 65 back. to one is the first of kind of the long shots that I got, although Patrick Reed will definitely be on my betting board now. He finished T14th in his first master start last year. I don't think it can be said enough how impressive it is to have that kind of finish at Augusta, your first trip around. 
Uh, he's finished 21st or better in three of the four majors last year. So he seems to be one of those guys that plays very well in the biggest events. He is one of the best putters on tour. Again, elite putters do well here. He gained seven shots on the field at the players just on the greens where he finished six. And his numbers off the tee are much higher than they were last year. I really like Minwoo Lee as a dark horse. And Australians have had a history of doing very well. Uh, at this venue uh, did I miss any or do you guys want to because I got two more long shots you guys got any long shots to win I want to know what DraftKings has got Bryson DeChambeau at right now 110 to 1 I have him listed come on yeah yep 110 to 1 I have him um, listed I got Adam Scott at 100 to 1 Patrick Reed obviously was 90 to 1 but Adam Scott 100 to 1 uh, my guy T Gala uh, 120 to 1 $2, sorry. I messed up again. You know, I'm not <laughs> picking on you. I couldn't get anything wrong. And then uh, Bubba Watson, why not? Mm-hmm. Just like, Wonder honestly, what, he's he's 250 to one. Why wouldn't you put $5 on that just for the hell of it? Like, see, Ryan, what do you it. think about Keith Mitchell, 90 to one? Played at UGA. Uh, he's got the, you know, one cut. I mean, he made the cut in the one Start he made here, but his ball striking, he hits it really long. Good driver. Is he somebody that you could see competing? I just don't know if he's got the complete game for Augusta um, or the whole mental game for his Augusta. His chipping is yeah. definitely a concern around the greens. Yeah. Uh, DeChambeau, who you mentioned, I have him down as a long shot, 110 to 1. He made the cut in five or six trips to Augusta. And I'm going to get into this with some of the props, but all expectations is this going to play wet. And long, I think that would play right into DeChambeau's strengths. Uh, his odds are way too high. Th- I mean, that's insane. This guy has won a major uh, talent-wise. You know, I know a lot of people don't like DeChambeau. I get that. But talent-wise, he shouldn't be getting 100 to 10 to 1 odds on a course that we said par 5 scoring is huge. This dude eats par 5s. Uh, I like DeChambeau a lot at 110 to 1. Any other long shots to win? The one that I gave um, in the uh, article, uh, Kirk at one thirty-five mm-hmm. to one, just because again, current form. I think he's playing well. I watched him at uh, Valero last week, and I thought he did really well. Um, and like I told mm-hmm. you, what I saw in him was a guy that was just going for the win, and it just didn't work out for him. It wasn't. It wasn't that he was playing bad. He literally took the chances that he needed to take in order to get uh, put himself in a situation where he could catch a hot golfer, and it just backfired on him on a couple array like approach shots. But I think he's got um, a good thing going right now, and I know his history isn't great at Augusta, but in his current form, I really do think that uh, you have to take a flyer on him. Got one more long shot name, and that's it, because he played at the University of Georgia. We used to host this big tournament at Mount Vintage for uh, juniors for Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina, and he won it one year, and that's Sepp Straka. Ooh. I think, you know, he's been playing pretty well since he got his tour card. He's Great played that golf striker. course a bunch of times. He made a hole-in-one on 12. The, 12 the other, was it 12 when he made the hole-in-one? Yeah, it was like the first player in forever. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. in the practice round. So, I mean, it, at you know, I, I don't know what DraftKings has got him, but that's probably worth a five. But when I mean, I could see a guy like him being in contention on Sunday just because he's, you know, he plays loose. <laughs> Excuse me. He's got nothing to lose. Um, and he's, he's a good good ball striker. I can't even find him right now. The, uh, oh, here it is. <laughs> 300 to one. There you go. Five bucks. I got, I got five dollars for anybody over 100 to one, man. There you go. <laughs> All right, some of my top five plays. I got five of them. I got Rory plus 170, Cam Smith, who I've already discussed, plus 550, Sunjay, who again I've discussed, plus 700. I love Corey Connors, nine to one to top five. He's coming off a win, three straight top tens at Augusta, gaining 1.9 shots or more in his last five events, tee to green, off the tee, and approach. And he puts by far uh, the best on bent greens. And then Bubba Watson is 40 to one, to top five uh, on DraftKings. Again, two-time champ. has only missed a cut once in 12 appearances at the Masters. And he's another guy that I think that if it's wet and plays long, that only plays into Bubba's hands. Uh, I mean, 40 to one for a top five. I love those odds. 
You guys got any top five plays that you like this week? I, I took. Really. Go ahead, Al. I was. I took Brooks plus eight fifty because I'm a homer. <laughs> you guys got, I don't really have. Uh, Are we sleeping off. on DJ? Of course, probably. And I think DJ's the guy that's got the mentality. I mean, I'm a Coastal Carolina alum. I was there the same time as him during. Yeah, he's just a nut. But um, yeah, I, I think he's a guy that he doesn't care about all the noise, and he's just going to go out there and play golf. And if he can roll the rock a little bit, he's he's got a shot. But yeah, I think we're definitely sleeping on DJ, um, yeah. especially you know. right with it being again to your point. Wet if it plays like it did in 2020, he won that Masters. Uh, you know. Pretty easily, if I remember. Nobody hits a cut longer than that. Exactly. Like, and if you can hit a cut around that golf course, you're doing just fine. Uh, top tens. I got Kepka plus three thirty, Hideki plus three fifty, Connors plus three fifty, Deshambo plus eight fifty, and then I really like this one. I think you might, Ryan, as well. Danny Will at nine to one, along with his win in 2016. He's finished in the top twenty five of two of his last three starts here. Finished T12 here last year. Uh, he gained strokes on bent greens, which is something he does not do on the other two surfaces. Yeah. And in his last five starts on tour, he's gaining strokes in all five major categories. He's finished no worse than 34th in his last four starts, and they've been at difficult venues. you got the players, Honda, Arnold Palmer, and Genesis. Uh, and I know you don't have the, you know, numbers right in front of you but ryan name a guy or two that you just think they have a good chance to finish in the top 10 and i'll give you the odds shane lowry so lowry i know is gonna have pretty good odds i was shocked how low he was he is 55 to win 10 to 1 to top 5 and 4 to 1 to top 10 to top 10 yeah i mean he's (coughs) those guys guys like lowry and uh, anybody who's played well at Augusta before, I mean, you guys know golf is such a visual sport. So if you've got great visualizations of what you've done before at Augusta, I think that gives you such an advantage. And he's played well there. And, you know, at, what was it? It was a nine to one to top 10 or 10 yes. to one to top 10. He was a 10 to one to top five, four to one to top 10. Good to top five. Okay. I mean, so I think that's great odds to top five. I think he's a good one. Curious. What's Tiger's top 10? It's a lot. I would imagine. Uh, where it's is going like to be tough. 16 to 1 or something like that. Gotcha. Is he? he is uh, 6 to 1 to top 10. So that has gone down considerably because other people That's in crazy. his range uh, to top 10, like for instance, Adam Scott is 7 to 1 to top 10. True. Previous winner. Knows that golf course super well. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, guys like Louis U stays in. You know, you can't. He is plus so, 750 to top 10. God, man. I mean, and he knows that golf course. You know, that's the thing about we were just talking about with the Masters. I mean, there's so many guys that have played well there and can play well there. And you don't have to be the big flashy golfer to mm-hmm. do well there. So it just, yeah. Louis Eustace, I think, would be a, a good one to top 10. Um, you know, Your Billy, boy Straka, by the way, 18 to 1 to top 10. I think ooh. I'm about to make that bet. That'd be a good $10 bet for sure. For sure. I mean, Charles Schwartzel, he's won there before. Obviously, Mm -hmm. he's playing on the Live Tour. Um, You know, Brian Harmon, he played at University of Georgia. He actually holds the course record at Mount Vintage where I was at in the Hooters Tour event. Um, Schwartzel is is, is 55 to 1 to top 5 and 18 to 1 to top 10. 55 to 1 to top 5? I mean, it's insane. Uh, Top 20 plays. Uh, For me... I think Connors at plus 140 is about as safe of a bet as you can get with plus odds. Uh, you know, the fact that he won last week, again, he's finished top 10 three years in a row. That is not easy to do. Uh, yeah. So, and again, the only year that he didn't was his first time ever playing Augusta. So it's like he figured it out. Uh, Tiger plus 210. I think those are actually pretty decent odds for Tiger to top 20. Uh, the only thing that does concern me is it is supposed to get really cold Saturday. Yeah. And that could be the round that undoes, you know, obviously a chance for him. Uh yeah, Bubba you... plus four fifty. The what the two though that I'm interested in, Gordon Sargent plus six fifty for y'all that don't know, number one am in the world. This kid is gonna be a stud. Again, I think that if the course is wet as expected, this guy hits it 
a mile that will really help him because the course will not play as firm and fast. It'll mean that maybe he won't make as many, you know, no, no mistakes uh, for a first timer. And then the other one, I'm really shocked. Phil was plus 750 to top 20 since 2015. He's finished the top 35, five out of six times in this event, top 21 and four of six. I think the crowd's going to be behind Phil since he was gone last year. Um, and just a reminder, Phil finished 21st at Augusta and won the PGA in 2021, the last time he played in majors. And Phil still hits it a mile. Uh, it would not shock me at all if he finishes top 20. Uh, and, again, you're getting plus 750 odds for a three-time Masters champion who, again, he just won a major two years ago. So it's not like he's won. Very difficult golf course, yes. Yep. Any Gary, other guys? Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, Gary Woodland, I think, is another name that, you know, obviously he's over there on – is he on the live? It, no, he's on no, the tour. He's, he's on the tour. tour. But okay. he is 35-1 to one to top five, 12-1 to one to top ten. Let's see his top 20 odds real quick. And uh, – He's played in a lot of Masters. He knows that golf course real well. He hits the ball a mile still. Mm -hmm. um, you know, his, his putting has never really He's been plus 450 to top 20, which again, I think is good odds. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. A lot of these. Yeah. Bubba actually went to five to one. He was plus 450 to top 20, which is again, just shocking to me. Yeah. Uh, any other ones, Alan? I've got, um, Zala Torres top 10 plus 320. Uh, Kirk top 20 plus 320. Uh, Harold Warner, a sneaky top 20 plus 400. And then uh, Bubba Watson, top 10 plus 14 to 1 would be my props. I'm going to take Sanjay out of my top 10. I don't want to, I don't need to double down on him. Who, uh, give me a, before we go, give me a surprise name that could win this event. I think Cantley would be the one for you, right, Al? Yeah, I'm Tiger Woods. Screw <laughs> <laughs> don't get my hopes up, Al. Uh, I'm joking. Um, yeah, I think Cantley would be one I think a lot of people, would be shocked if he won, even though his eyes are good. Um, I think he's been overshadowed by the Xanders and, and the couple other guys around his price range. Colin Morikawa is another one. Um, but, yeah, Cantley is going to be the guy for me that I'd be like, dang, I got that right. <laughs> what about for you, Ryan? I'm going to throw out one we haven't even mentioned yet. Victor Hovland, I think, is a name that, you know, he's he's playing as good as anybody right now. And like Alan just said, he, the, some of these names get overshadowed because of the names of other people. Um, mm -hmm. And I think Victor Hovland on here, I see him as like 33 to 1. Um, but he could be a surprise there on Sunday making some noise. I think he can handle the pressure and his game suits well for Augusta. For me, give me Terrell Hatton, who yeah. statistically is playing the best golf of his career. Uh, doesn't have a great track record at Augusta, but he's made the cut. I believe it's in like four out of his five starts here. His game, though, is made for it. Uh, he's another one of those guys. He's such a good ball striker. If he can just putt well. Uh, if he can keep his temper know. in line, he'll exactly. be just fine. Which he seems to be doing a little better job yeah, of. For sure. For uh, sure. He doesn't have about, any temper issues. <laughs> None. We None. talked about John Rahm a few years ago. Who <laughs> neither one of us mentioned today. Why do you think that is? I I mean, he's, he's good. He's great. I just don't think he's going to – I don't think he's got the temperament for it, man. It's just – it's just I just can see one one shot going left or going right or hitting the water, and there's a lot of beep. <laughs> yep. You, you can't, think it's fair gotta... to say, Ryan, he's so aggressive, particularly with his iron shots, that this is not the venue for him. Yeah, you've got to know when to turn on the aggressiveness and turn it off. And if you're just aggressive all the way around at Augusta, that's when it shows its teeth and usually sends you packing. All right. Well, I think we made it all the way through there. But before we get out of here, Ryan, plug, tell us where all we can listen to you and, and about the cool opportunity you got coming up in uh, yeah. May. Obviously, uh, I run Bay Point Golf Club down here in Panama City Beach, so come down and play some awesome golf. Just Nicholas played it. Golf it's course. freaking phenomenal, people. It's a great track, Amazing. fun to play multiple times, lots of water, um, a good test of golf, but it's also, Bring if you play balls. from the right tees, it's a, uh, it can be good for mm -hmm. anybody. Um, I'm obviously, I'll be on uh, ESPN Northwest Florida down here on Friday, um, but then in about three or four weeks, I'm excited to uh, get my own midday radio show going on ESPN Amazing. Northwest Florida. Congrats. It'll be from 11 to 1 Monday through Friday. Don't know the name yet. I think Jay's going to be hopping on, helping me out a little bit. So 
Uh, excited to get that going. But yeah, come down and visit us here in Panama City Beach. It's an awesome spot to come hang out. It's amazing. Alan, you plug some uh, stuff, buddy. Get no, some stand yeah, up yeah, coming yeah, up, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, I got stand-up coming up, but you guys don't need to come see that. <laughs> but um, uh, for me, I'm just going to get into the draft stuff, try to get rid of this runny nose. I'm over here sitting like a kid. But um, for me, I'm again, just switching a little bit from golf um, to do some draft breakdowns. Uh, for folks who like film, uh, just follow me on Twitter, which is at ActiveLaze85. Occasionally, I come by and, and drop some tidbits. I also want to pat myself on the back and say that I noticed – that the Chiefs ran the same play twice just from opposite sides before it went viral. But I don't ever get credit for that stuff. So, um, <laughs> But I do do some some breakdowns on people. And if you are a fan of college football, just at me, give me a player, um, and I'll break them down for you. Yeah, good stuff. Um, and as for me, again, follow me on Twitter, at Keith Fleming. Um, obviously, Check out my article each week on fantasy6pack.net. I give you a DFS lineup uh, for golf as well as four extra plays. And then uh, just kind of recuperating from last year's football DFS season. But I will be back with Fantasy and Frames and my boy Joe Matz doing the Daily Fix again next year. Be sure to follow the Daily Fix on YouTube. And trying to get my golf game back together, Ryan, I'm actually going to start playing in some uh, amateur events. There you go. I'd like to win the club championship again maybe this year. Uh, Jay gave me some good tips when I was down there. So uh, I had my neck fused two years ago, so it's been a process getting back. But starting to feel good about my game, and the weather's amazing in Georgia, so I've been trying to bang a lot of balls. But, uh, again, be sure to follow Fantasy Six Pack on Twitter. And uh, – just enjoy the Masters, man. It's the greatest golf week of the year. Uh, the app is phenomenal. If you have not downloaded it, please check it out. They got past events. I mean, it, it really is. It's You can arguably. literally see every shot replayed from the entire golf tournament on that app. I've never seen anything like it. It's it's arguably, in my opinion, the best app ever made sport-wise. It's, it's phenomenal. So be sure to check that out. But uh, we will be back next week. Ryan, thanks again. And we'll no, see you guys pleasure. soon. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Take care, everyone.